Welcome back, everyone, to another incredible episode of Chat with Dan here. Now, for today, I mean, what can I say? You know, we have on the show the incredible, amazing, the badass, the superstar, the one and only Tim. Tim, how are you today, man? Good. How are you, my friend? Nice to see you. Pretty fantastic. And what better way, right, to have an incredible, super badass day than to be chatting with someone as badass as you? You know what I mean? Oh, my God. I'm badass? Wow. Like, let's see. I, in 47 years, I don't know if I've ever been badass, but I'll, I'll take it as a compliment. I, uh, All right. I, I, hope I, I hope I live up to that, uh, the badassity, badassianity. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Uh, now, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, follow, help a lot. But also in the description below, you're going to follow all of Tim's social media. Let's follow him and let's discover why he's super badass, basically. Now, without further more, I will start this whole conversation by throwing out the first question, which is what initially drew you to acting in the first place? Like, was there a specific moment or performance or performance that solidified your passion for it? When I first got into uh, acting, it was completely by accident as an, and an excuse to get out of uh, a certain class. When I was in eighth grade, they had auditions for the school play during the school day. And they were taking place during math class. And I would have done anything to get out of math class. And um, it was a musical version of the O. Henry story, The Gift of the Magi. And uh, I had no aspirations to be an actor. I went in and auditioned. And the director, his name was Mr. Laird. And he was this big, jolly Santa Claus uh, type of guy. And he cast me in the leading role. He must have seen something. And uh, you get into rehearsals. And then you do... Um, the performances and when i he first heard that the roar of laughter and the roar of the audience i i was hooked and then from and that was 1990 and uh i've been doing it ever since and of course have have trained and have you know gone to the theater and watched every movie and read every book uh that i could get my hands on but uh that first moment it was really being on stage in front of a live audience and getting that reaction and that reaction was it was like a drug really and uh it's still uh, i still get that uh that thrill and that excitement that is incredible and yeah it's interesting you know with the with all the actors that i have interviewed most me all of them basically have told me like that first experience is like breathtaking you know like like have it like it's like something in some like basically something in your in your head is clicking and then you will see everything kind of start to click at, at, at the same time and you start to fall, you start to create this passion for it and you basically go along with it well yeah. and the, there was a wonderful feeling of you know when you're at that young age where you feel that kind of awkwardness you know you're becoming a young adult anything that you could do where you feel that i belong like i feel it i feel I felt like I was at home. Like, and when I got to high school and did, you know, theater and got involved, and in, it was the first time I really took acting classes and learned about uh, different techniques and about improvisation and learned about Shakespeare. And basically, I, I kind of became a student of the history of this work, really. Uh, and um, it was interesting. And, you know, I'm a firm believer that you learn this work by by doing it, by getting out there and 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 doing it as much as possible, doing every play that you can get your hands on, every you know film or commercial or what have you. Because one of the things that um, we are as actors is that we're we're students, we're students of human nature. And the thing is also, in this work, you never stop learning. I mean, I've been lucky enough to be doing this for over more than half my life. And I still approach this with that same kind of student mentality because I'm learning, because there are new technologies and things like that that happen all of the time. And you have to be open and available to that. And it's, and it's nice because you learn things about the, you know, you have those moments where you can go out in a, on a film set or into a, a play and have those moments where you can surprise yourself. And that's, that, that's like a, that's breathtaking. And that's like, you know, like things that you didn't even know that you could do, uh, that you can go out and surprise yourself. And that's, that's a wonderful feeling. Absolutely. Yeah. And like, how do you think your portrayal of characters has evolved over the years? Well, I think as you get older, I think, you know, I'll give you an example. I would say I'm a different actor 
now than I was 10 years ago because I'm a father. Um, you know, I'm married, happily married to my beautiful wife, Jamie. And, and having those life experiences, I think, help in creating characters. Like when I read a script, if I read a script of a father or, you know, someone in that same kind of age range, there are characteristics in all of those characters that I can connect with. Like, oh, I, I've, uh, I've done that. I've lived that. Or I've known somebody. Or it's, it's a little easier to uh, access that. Uh, and certainly I'm a different actor than I was 20 years ago just because, um, you know, it's like uh, it's all part of a, as you grow as a person, you grow as an artist. And, uh, and again, it just comes back to being open and available to uh, and being a student and, you know, and, and saying to yourself that I'm still learning at this. And uh, I don't know. I don't know any actor that ever gets to a point in their professional life where they say, I know everything that I could possibly know about being an actor. I mean, I mean, I think they once asked John Gilgood, I think he was 92. And someone asked him the question, well, what is acting? And he said, damned if I know. And it's true. It's like, you know, you never really know what it is. It's just that's that's part of the joy of doing this. It's kind of like detective work, you know, the adventure, you know, the adventurer in me of like when I when I first read Treasure Island when I was in fourth grade, like, you know, that adventurous spirit. I mean, at the end, I, I do think uh, I do think that generally, like in life, you never stop learning. And if you that it's better if you have like this attitude to always welcoming yeah to always welcome any chance you can get to learn something new right sure because i mean i've i mean i have met people that sometimes they get like this idea that they know everything mm -hmm. and along the way you you start to discover that they don't know anything about it and then you know like you you i mean it's better if you just enjoy the like enjoy the whole experience to it and just learn from it i mean you can get the chance to learn so many things from basically everyone every, yeah at this point so yeah i do think also that that is a great kind of yeah like that is a great way to yeah like in the whole you know um uh, acting acting uh in general the the fact that you're able to learn from from uh from someone and from that someone oh. you are able to present a character later on for a project in which we the audience once we see it somehow we can we can get hooked to it and we can feel like these emotions that even though we know that is not real the emotions we're having to that character we are seeing it are real so i mean that that whole process i find it like really really amazing and 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 interesting at the same time so sure well and the thing is also when you approach this um as kind of a student and not like a rigid you're you're loose and you're relaxed that you're you're more open and available to uh, what other people bring you on a film set. I mean, actors, you know, you know, you 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 work on your script and you work on the characters, but you never really know what's going to happen in a scene until you're with that other actor or uh, actors. That uh, and that's you know because I always like to think that my performance comes how I'm listening and reacting to what the other actor is giving you. And when you approach it from that way, it's so much more open and free and you're loose and relaxed. And uh, and when you're loose and relaxed, that's when you can create. If you're really tense, like, OK, this actor is not doing this actor is not doing the lines the way I want them done or, you know, not the way we rehearsed. It, it's the death of what we do, because you're not being free and honest and in the moment. and that. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, and when you're loose also, I mean, Peter Sowers used to say that, you know, the best things happen, they, they would be known as happy accidents, that those things that happen in the moment that were not planned, that were not rehearsed. But if you had the actors that were so prepared and so relaxed and loose that it was fine. And it, and it actually, in some cases, elevates a play or a scene or a movie. Yeah, I mean, that is. That is just great, you know. Like whenever I will see, we will see either film, TV show, play. Sometimes the whole character creation process to it, and then we see like the characters doing like an, an a specific scene or something, and then somehow you can, as I was saying, the fact that you can get kind of hooked to it, you know, that you 
that something mm-hmm. about it kind of relates to you somehow and you actually care for that character and i love when a when a when an actor is able to create that connection with the viewers basically because i think when you manage to to, to do that you're basically good to go you know what i mean so yeah i do think you know is is things like that that makes me sometimes value entertainment more you know what i mean like especially like on covid and that we didn't have any any of it i think that was like the breaking point for most of people even me in which we were like desperate for content you know we were desperate for new things for film tv shows and it was incredible that for some actors uh they were able to create plays on zoom or Mm -hmm. quick you know or like quick quick uh quick shows on tiktok or youtube or you know like um like the whole imagination when went on and it was great to use the technology that it was available for everyone to create something positive to it and help mm-hmm. in this during that crazy time in which we were all our couple of years ago. So, well, we have, you always have to feed the beast. We all have this artistic beast within us that, you know, and you feed it with, with Shakespeare or with Ibsen or with, with movies or with good music. And, uh, and during that time, during COVID, you really needed that because for me, uh, just getting away from the news and for two or three hours, you disappear into the world of Shakespeare or we would, I mean, I, I did, I worked with a company where we would do poetry readings or, um, you know, we would read, um, you know, Robert Frost or, you know, things like that. And, and it was wonderful because it gave you something, something to do. And for that two or three hours, um, you know, you didn't think about, uh, you know, vaccinations or, you know, getting, uh, things stuck up your nose or what have you. And so like, uh, I think that's why it's important that you, you do, I think like to your point, you were saying you, you do learn from the movies and from the theater and from TV shows, you learn valuable life lessons and that why it's you know it's so essential not only as entertainment but uh you know jack nicholson said that you know this work this it it teaches you everything about life i mean you mean i've i've learned things from life about life watching my idols like jack lemon and spencer tracy and albert finney and you know you just like uh about cautionary tales and like uh that's again it's you just being a student just sponge just soaking it all just soaking it all in yeah and you know it's, it's interesting because it, it is true like the fact that on you know with films tv shows you can get the chance to talk about a specific topics mm-hmm. that maybe the general audience wouldn't dare to talk about because you know they're afraid to or they don't know how to uh, express themselves so it's great that we will see sometimes that on films they will be playing this specific type of situation we're having or kind of talk about a problem that we are currently facing on and you know whatever thing it is and it's great because then you can start to get the ideas to it and be like you know what you can start to create like your own thought about it and from there you can start to investigate more on your own or to learn a little bit about it as well i mean besides, as you were saying, besides entertain us, it can also teach us, it can also inspire us, it can also give us a lot of things, you know, for uh, for 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 our personal growing and mm-hmm. to become somehow a better version of uh, of ourselves at that point, so. Perfect, perfectly said. Yeah, and tell me, like, what's, like, what's the most important lesson that you have learned from a character you've portrayed? Wow. It, it it just comes down to uh, the most important lesson is just from any of the characters that I've played. It, it's something that Jimmy Cagney said, uh, the, the secret in his mind to acting, plant your feet, look the other person in the eye and mean whatever you say. And that's a, a lot of the characters I've played is just, you know, that's, you just try to be truthful. You just try to be truthful. You try to be honest. You try to be decent. Even when I'm playing, you know, not so likable characters they don't think they're a bad guy or whatever but like uh you know you just the most valuable lesson is that i've learned is to just uh just be honest just be honest when i was doing that play in eighth grade rags to riches we were back in the uh in our dressing room which was the music band room and the principal of the uh of the of the grade school sister phyllis 
she pulled me aside and uh, and she gave me a, a very valuable bit of advice that I think not only as a, as an actor but also I think in life as well. And she said, "Don't act." She said, "You're you're you're good. You have good natural instincts, but the secret is don't act. Just react. Just react and just and be honest. And if you can do and if you can do that, you're gonna you're gonna be successful." There you go. I like it. I like that quote. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. She was a smart lady. Yeah. But I mean, like I well, it's funny. I didn't I didn't think about it for about 15 or 20 years. And I said, Oh my God, did I really get like the best acting advice from my eighth grade principal? But yeah, Sister Phyllis, wherever you are, thank you. Yeah, I mean it does happen that when you were I mean it 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 does it has happened to me a, a lot of times that Back when I was in school, I was the well, I was the worst student ever. But a lot of teachers told me a lot of things that he, that till this day, some that they make sense now. And I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. I get it now. You know, maybe at that point I was young, naive, stupid somehow. But you know, that was the way uh, all young people is sometimes. But it's great that later on you start to discover and be like, I get it now. You know, like there's actually more meaning to it. And you know, I, I, yeah. Then you realize how blessed and how yeah how how blessed because you got the opportunity for people like that actually gave you an important advice that yes perhaps at that point didn't make any sense but later on got into your head and you were like i get it now and you see yeah. it's different somehow so oh absolutely and it's like you know it's that voice that 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 voice in your head like i i wouldn't say that i'm a terribly i mean i was raised catholic but i'm i would characterize myself as kind of non-practicing but that like i hear like that voice like you know of, of sister phyllis like you know just don't act don't act just react and that's that's one of the like i mean back to like a, a life lesson just just react and be truthful that's that's one of the things i've learned yeah this is the way <laughs> and so acting can be you know emotionally demanding but how do you maintain a balance between fully immersing yourself in a role and taking care of your mental health and emotional well-being? Well, I think with that is um, being prepared. When I work on a, a play, the first thing I do is I learn that script cover to cover. And same thing with a, a film script. And like, for example, I, I'm going out to California to do the play Misery in two months. And if you have the kind of time, that time to prepare and be ready and, you know, get the lines in your head and just and just drill it, drill it, drill it, drill it. The more prepared you are, the more relaxed you are. And when you're relaxed, that's when you can you can create. Like I was saying before, it's like when you're relaxed, you can do anything. And so all of that helps with, you know. Uh, mental health and uh and of course you have to take care of yourself you know i mean uh you know you can't go out and uh you know i i don't go out and go out drinking like i did 20 odd years ago i mean your body can't uh take it but also you kind of you kind of cherish like when i'm not working i i like being home i'm a homebody i like being home with my wife and my son and my dog and you know uh and just that's a way of like taking care of my mental health is just um, when I'm not working, family is my, they're, they're the most important uh, thing to me. And, uh, and they're also my, my support base. I mean, and also, you know, any project I do, my wife is the first person uh, I ask and like, you know, what do you think? Like, you know, uh, can we do this? Can, uh, you know, is this something that I would want to do? And so when you have, that kind of support base it uh it just makes it uh it makes it easy i'm very lucky in that respect uh to have that kind of support not only from my wife and my son but my family and my friends and uh but as always you know you just you got to be prepared and you got to take care of yourself and how i mean and you, you just and every and it's kind of like an athlete really i mean uh you just and especially the older you get because it, it's if you got a two show day 
uh, a two a two show day, uh, you got to be in bed at a certain time and you got to be up and you got to like, all right, we're going to do this. And it's like, uh, and it's game time. And I still get those butterflies. Like I'm standing backstage before I go on. I still get, they're not necessarily nerves of like, oh God, I can't do this, but they're nerves of anticipation. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to get out there in front of that audience. And the same thing on a film set, you know, you, I always like to be early uh, on a film set. I like to, get on there and walk around and walk through the set and walk through, you know, um, and with, you know, get props and putting on the costume and putting on the clothes and, you know, if the character wears a hat, you know, and like all of those kinds of things help the actor and the artist, because the more, again, the more prepared, all of that, uh, you know, helps, you know, your mental health. And also it helps uh, the project and it, especially it helps the character. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. You know, it's so interesting because it's basically life, you know, perhaps there's some people out there who think that acting is just learning your lines and good to go. But like, once you see like a little bit of it that you start to discover that, I mean, that learning your line, sure, it's, it's part of the whole thing. But when, once you know, like the whole thing that involves to it, to actually present something, you start mm -hmm. to see some 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 similarities as as life, basically. You know the fact that you need to prepare. You know, like the uh, the better the better you prepare, the better you will be able to perform. The fact that you need to take care of yourself at the end of the day, because that you know you need to keep the instrument as you know you you need to keep yourself healthy. Otherwise, you're gonna crash, or it's gonna be you know horribly. It's gonna be bad. That's what I'm trying to say. You know, and yeah. I watched a document. There was a, a wonderful documentary about Michael Jordan's last season with the Bulls. I think it was called The Last Dance. And watching him, how he was before a game, he was he would get into that zone. Like he was very he would be very quiet to himself. He'd have his headphones on and his teammates knew don't bother Mike before the game. It it, it he, he was he was methodical. And then when he got on that floor it was he was going to work he was going to war and he had one goal in mind and that was to to dominate and to win i think an, an actor an artist it's the same thing i think when you if you're going out there and if you're doing like a, a two and a half three hour play and if you're out there and you know you're not prepared mentally physically emotionally um it's it's hard it's hard to do and if you're especially if you're doing that eight shows a week if same thing with a movie if you're on a movie set for 14 16 hours a day and you're doing a lot of waiting around you have to get your body in that zone like what michael jordan does because if you're on set for 14 16 hours you may not be working for 14 16 hours you might be sitting around waiting if they're setting up the lights and all of that but you got to be ready when you get that call you got to be ready to hit your marks and, and do it. And so, again, it comes back to like just taking care of yourself, being relaxed and being loose and having a good sense of humor helps, too. It really I mean, uh, it really does like uh, and even when you're doing something like a little heavier, uh, you know, you got to be I think the more loose and relaxed you are, uh, the better you're going to be. Totally. <clears throat> You know, back when I started, I had like this, yeah, back when I started with this platform, I had this idea of going all in, right, to, you're going to sleep until you die, you know, you go, like, go, go crazy on it. Mm -hmm. And for f four months, five months, yeah, around like that, I was having from Monday to Sunday around 10, nine interviews daily, non-stopping, like one after the other, after the, you know, like non-stopping, non-stopping. And after the sixth month, I was like, I just can't do it anymore. You know, I just got, yeah. I got, I started to get tired of it. I started to get, yeah, like the whole thing to it. It started like to lose that, um, that special feeling because mm -hmm. I went all into it. And because I didn't understand back then that you need to take it easy. Otherwise you're going to, you know, you're not going to enjoy it at all. And it took me kind of six months to understand finally that and be like, you know what? No, I just take it easy from now on. Go one, two, perhaps three interviews a week. Take yeah. it easy, work on some other stuff, have time with your friends, family, 
you know, enjoy life every now and then because that is important. You know, like I, I do think that specifically on those moments that you can get the chance to relax, you know, to kind of disconnect yourself from your work, your passion, whatever. It's when you can actually get inspired to create something more. When you can, when you get this idea, like I got this, you know, like, oh, I can, I can do this or I can do that. So yeah, after that, I discovered that it is important for you to take some days, you know, take a, take a day, you know, take a break every now and then. Yeah. And it's uh, okay the end, to do that. Yeah. At it's the end, okay you need to, to do that. enjoy the whole ride to it. You know, an actor once told me you need to enjoy the whole ride. I mean, don't focus only on the end goal because you're going to miss the chance to learn so many things during the whole ride to it. You know, take, yeah. enjoy it. It's a process. You gotta, so. you gotta enjoy the journey, the journey. That's, you know, I mean, you know, I think I, I get nostalgic from time to time. I think back to like, you know, 20 odd years ago when I was working at the 13th street repertory theater in West village in lower Manhattan and, you know, doing children's plays and staged readings and, you know, the plays and, and, and just, and sometimes doing the plays for like five people and having the time of my life because I, I get to do what I love. There are a lot of actors who, who don't get the opportunity to work uh, because for whatever reason. And so anytime that you can get a chance to get up and do your work, do it. But anytime also where you can like, you know, you can step back and say, you know what, I need to just sit and read a book, read 50 pages of a book or sitting um and during, and during the pandemic that happened uh, a lot you know like you know you just like take a walk listen to some good music like uh work out you know and uh be with family be with friends i mean you you got again that's it all comes back to taking care of yourself what can i say <laughs> i love it and if you could you know switching a little bit you know like moving forward here and tell me if you could play any historical figure fictional character mm. or you know what even an animal why not sure. who or what would it be and why any historical character i i'm fascinated i i've always been fascinated by uh teddy roosevelt i think he i think he was such a fascinating and i've read a number of of, of books about him and uh I just think there's just so much there. Like he's so, you know, with the history, um, I, I like the history too, but like, uh, he's a fascinating man. Like th this is a, a man who said that the creation of the American Museum of Natural History, he thought was his greatest achievement, not being president of the United States, but like the creation of the American Museum of Natural History in New York, where people from all over the world can come in and see you know, learn about the natural sciences because he believed in, you know, if this world, we're on this earth for a very, very brief amount of time, but we have to take care of it. And that, that fascinates me about, like, there's just so much there and be fun to uh, play around with that. Plus he looks like, you know, it, he was a, he was quite the character. I, I played him in a, uh, they had this TV show a couple of years ago called, I think it was called Mysteries at the Castle. And I played Teddy Roosevelt when it was at the time when a lot of, uh, there were a lot of uh, deaths related to college football because back in when President Roosevelt was presiding, they did not have the modern, you know, stuff that they have for football today. They just had leather helmets, basically, and no, not much in the way of padding. And he almost put a stop to football. He got all of the heads of like a lot of the major, like Harvard and Yale and, uh, and said, you guys need to fix this or I'm going to shut down football. And so, which I did not know that. So, and that's the thing about these, these characters too, like Teddy Roosevelt is that you learn so much about them that like, you know, I mean, they're, they're more than just a president of the United States or a rough rider. Like there's so much there. And, uh, yeah, Teddy Roosevelt would be uh, that would be a fun one to play. Yeah, I like it. It's true. The fact that you can get the chance to learn why they did certain things, you know, or things mm -hmm. like that. I do think that that's when you get, you know, it's like somehow you discover more about. I mean, I would say, yeah, besides yourself, but at the same time, you can get a chance to learn more about society, basically, you know, and on how on how complex sometimes we might be, or how me, or how we might act depending on things, you know. So. 
Yeah, it's just great. So, and in the context of the time, you know, like decisions. I'm sure. I mean, I know he had to make decisions as the president of the United States, like, uh, I mean, that were difficult, that affected where we are today, probably, as did uh, many presidents. So, like that kind of like delving into that, like what makes a character, how they behave and what makes them, uh, cause we're all complicated people. And I think like investigating that, like, uh, would be a lot of fun and like, you know, and I'm sure I would discover a lot of really wonderful, interesting information. There you go. Okay. And if your life was turned into a movie, which <laughs> actor would you want to play you and why? Well, he's no longer with us, but uh, my idol is Jack Lemon. So uh, if Jack Lemon were still alive, and probably Jack Lemon, right around when he was doing Save the Tiger, which would be around 1973, which I think was close to how I am now, I think Jack Lemon. I think uh, I. I mean, if if I'm off camera and like just watching him play me, I thought. He does it. He would probably do it better than me. <laughs> and what will be the title of that film? Oh, God. Wow. That's a tough one. The title. Magic time. Before Jack Lemon would say a, uh, you know, before the cameras would roll on a scene, he would say under his breath, magic time. And I do that as well. And so I think, because that's what he considered this work, like the, how lucky we are. And I feel the same way. So magic time would be uh, the title. There you go. We have a title. I love it. And acting, you know, often involves uh, vulnerability and putting yourself out there. So how do you handle criticism and rejection in such a competitive industry? It's part of the, it's part of the, the work. It's, you know, I don't know. Criticism with me, because it, it was always interesting. Like I, when I was in college, I had a teacher who was very, very tough on me. And, uh, and he had said, you know, if you're going to do this, you just need to know you're going to work. But if you have any success, it's not going to be until you're in your mid to late 40s, uh, which I am now. But he said, you know, it's going to be a lot of, um, you know, you don't look the way, you know, you don't have the conventional leading man looks. And he said, uh, you're going to be a character actor, which is fine for me. I mean, I've been. And so. My my feeling has always been anytime I don't get something, I always have that little voice goes off in my head and said, the next job is always around the corner. And if you have that outlook and that attitude, you know, that 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 that's the ideal way to approach this because Jeff Daniels has a wonderful quote. He said, Not everyone is gonna buy what you sell. It's just it's just the reality. You know, you're going to go into an audition room and you, your goal when you go into an audition room is not to actually say it, but like to basically say, I am here to solve your problem. And sometimes it's going to work and sometimes it's not going to work. And it may not work because. And, and of course, all of the variables of things that uh, may that you can't control um, and things that may have nothing to do with whether or not you're a good actor and I've sat on the other side of that table. Every person that comes into the room, the audition, they're all good actors, but it's always like whenever I, like I play a lot of fathers. So trying to match up, you know, and finding the right energy. And it's like, uh, but you know, as far as criticism, it's, it's, it's a part of the job and uh, you know, you just kind of, you have to say, okay, Next job is around the corner, and that's and that in twenty or thirty plus years, that's that hasn't failed me yet. That's like even like more badass. Just saying. <laughs> Did I but, finally um, earn the badass? Like, I mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, we. I mean, you're at at this point, like what, like a badass level forty, fifty, let's say. <laughs> you're killing it. Thank but, you. But um. But you know, yeah. I, I mean, at the end, I do think that 
whenever that thing, you know, that that type of things happen, it was just not meant to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's and it's not the and the thing is, whenever I go in an audition, it, I don't look at it as an audition. I, if that's the only thing that you do in the entire day where you get to do your work, that's what it is. I'm going to work and you're and I'm playing the character and either, you know, they're going to they're going to use it or they're not. And. You know, you have no control what happens beyond. The only thing you can do is go in, do your job as best you can, have fun, and um, hopefully, in you know, uh, and be nice, be nice, be nice, be grateful, be thankful, and be ready. And uh, and that's that, that's the big things. There you go. I like it. And <clears throat> like, what motivates you? You know, we all have those days that basically we just want to quit. It's inevitable, happens to all of us. So how you maintain yourself positive on a day that, or in a moment that perhaps, yeah, let's say you're not doing so well, let's say. Well, you have to keep your eye on the prize. Like, I'll give you an example. A couple of weeks ago, I was I was doing a play and I, I don't know, there was something in, in the play that It, it kind of it didn't go the way I wanted it to go in that moment. And you always allow yourself about five minutes of like, oh, God, it didn't go the way I wanted to go. You get five minutes after five minutes, you shake it off and you get to do it and you do it again. And it, because it, in the theater, especially it's opening night every night. And so, yeah, there was there was something in, in a in a play that I did that it didn't work. And it really bugged me for about five minutes. But I said, you know what, Tim, you get to come back and do it again tomorrow night. And so that's the same thing, you know, with uh, that's motivation is that tomorrow's a new day. You know, if you do a, a take and if you blow a line, you get to do it again. And so like every take, every every time you go out in front of an audience, it's a new opportunity because it's new for them. It's new for you. And so if you if you have that outlook of like, you know, again, like just being the student and all right, I'm out here, let, let's do it. And uh, I, I learn from the audience as much as hopefully they learn from me. But uh, you got to stay positive. You have to stay positive because if you let the negativity creep in and I've seen it, I, I've seen it, it, it does affect the work. There was. An actor, I, I was doing a film a couple of years ago uh, in New Hampshire, and this actor was in a was in a bad mood. He was in, he was in a bad mood, and he was grumpy. And we were they were setting up the the lights and the camera and everything, and you know, uh, he just had this air of like you know like like he was in a bad mood. So I didn't really engage with him. And we start the cameras roll, we start doing the scenes, and he just starts blowing lines. And he's getting more and more and more upset. And he's just blowing the lines. And the director calls cut. And uh, and the actor kind of ran off set a little bit. And I went after him. And I and I didn't know this guy from Adam. I didn't know if I was going to get punched in the nose or not, like by, you know, confronting him. Because I, I didn't want I didn't, I had no intention of confronting him with, like, anything bad. I just went up and I said, hey, you know, like, it's going to be okay. And he says, I'm just really struggling with this part. And I said, do it right now. Do it for me right now. And we did the scene right there and there. And I said, you got it. And he said, don't over, you know, just don't overthink it. Just go out and just go back and do it. And like, you know, and just don't think about it. And if you blow a line, you blow a line. Everybody blows lines. I mean, and we went back and he had relaxed and did it two or three more times and he got it and he was fantastic and like uh we were, were chatting at lunch a little later and he said i just i get so in my head that's the thing is actors we tend to get in our own way we get when you get in your own way when you get in your head that's when you tense up and that's when you know you blow lines and you know you're you're not 
listening and you're not being honest and in the moment. So I think one of the big thing is, is just sometimes actors, you just need to get out of your own way. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I mean, now I'll be, that's why you're bad. I found out now. <laughs> <laughs> and that actor is a good friend. I mean, and cause that he had cool. said that he, um, he would, cause he would, he was, he would tell me he was, he was one of those actors that would come in on the first day of rehearsal and know exactly how he wanted to play the part. Like, and if, and if there was any deviation from that, he would get all tense. And, and I used to do that when I was in college, but I said, you know, when you do that, if you're an actor, if you come in on day one and you have to say, well, if you're doing a play or if you're doing a film and it's like, this is, I'm going to do the lines this way. I'm going to take a sip of water on this line. It, it looks fake. It's going to look fake. You have to, you know, you just got to be relaxed. You got to be natural. Um, you know, you, in, you know, and if, and if you blow a line or what have you, you get to do it again. I mean, uh, and if you're David Fincher, you get to do it 120 times, but like, you know, <laughs> so it's like, uh, you know, you got to, uh, that's the key thing is you just relaxation is, is everything in this work. And, and again, the more relaxed you are, the better off you're going to be. As I was saying, I mean, as, as I, as I said before, that's life. Yeah. You know, like the more I, yeah, like the the less, uh, what's, what I'm, what I'm trying to say here is that just enjoy the whole thing, learn from it. Things might happen, things, you know, bad, bad things might happen along the way, but that's just the way it is. You know, I used to say, but yeah, a, a couple of years ago, I used to say, I, I was saying a lot of things, uh, for example, if something bad happened during my day, I would say like, oh, you know what, this was a bad day, you know, like something that they, that things happen on your daily life that wasn't that were not planned happened to me I I, will, I was just saying like oh this was a bad day like uh, and all of that but then one day a couple of months ago my father had a heart attack mm. and when that thing happened I said you know what no screw everything I said before this was a bad day actually you know what I mean like this is actually something bad you know if I if I came late at work meh. You know, if something, if my boss, if I, if I slept and then I forgot my, my boss and had to ask for an Uber and spend more money, things happen. You know, if I forgot my umbrella and it started raining, things happen. You know yeah. what I mean? If, if I got angry with a coworker or something bad happened, things happen. And then that's when, that's what at least to me, it hit me. And I was like, you know what? I should be enjoying, enjoying more life, you know, enjoy life. And, uh, and whenever something bad happens, then sure, then take your time to it, grieve on the situation and then go back, go back on the road and, and keep moving forward. Because I think that, or at least something that, that that has helped me is that the more you just let loose yourself and just go for, for something you want and enjoy the whole experience, learn from it, the better things will come, you know, things. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's things like that. And that is like one of the reasons why I love to, you know, to interview actors, musicians, you know, vital smart models like all of that the fact that you guys are basically pursuing something that makes you you know that drives you that uh that uh that that fuels your life for with energy to continue moving forward and to continue for the next project to the next thing i mean that is super inspirational and that is something that perhaps we should be focusing more instead of focusing on things that happen on daily life focus more on yourself and just enjoy things so yeah just have mm -hmm. fun have fun like uh you know more good times that's what uh jack nicholson's uh life motto is more good times and that's like <clears throat> and that could be anything you know my, more good times could be you know sitting on your couch watching a, a baseball game or you know or you know but uh whatever it's whatever gives you joy that that's the older i get that's that's the big thing, like, you know, mm. is take those opportunities to really uh, enjoy life. There you go. Mm -hmm. And my last question, so we can all enjoy and relax. Here it is. What do you think that could be the best title for this episode? Be a student. I'll take be it. a student. Yeah. I think that, I think in our discussion, I think that's the phrase that's been coming up, like, uh, 
and like just yeah be a student be a student of of the work be a student of life be a student of uh, and learn from uh you know when i you know work with uh, actors on film sets or in plays i mean i i steal from all of them and like and just um you learn from them like uh not as far as like methodologies and things like that but you learn like wow like they make that look so easy like they're so relaxed or they're so uh they seem to really have it together and it's uh it's nice to do that and i think also when you again when you are a student and when you're open and available great things are going to happen you're going to learn you're going to you're going to do and the work is is much is much richer i you know compared to about maybe 10 15 years ago when i really started making working on movies um i'm much more relaxed like you know on 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 film just because you know you you do I, i've been doing it for a long time now and uh you know, you just, you feel more at ease and more relaxed, even when you're playing a character that might be different than anything I've ever played before. There's a trust. I think you, you trust yourself the more you do this and the more open and available that you, uh, that you allow yourself to be. And that's, yeah, but now be a student. I think that's, uh, I think that's the title. You have a title. I love it. And I mean, at the end, what can I say? You know, the fact that you're making it happen. That is super cool. That is, yeah, that's badass, basically. <laughs> that is <laughs> great. The fact that you're pursuing a passion for so many years now and that you're still doing it. I mean, I, that is super cool. And I do think, as I was saying before, that people should be focusing a little bit more on that, you know, on doing the thing that actually makes you happy, you know, go for it. You know, it's going to take time. Sure. It's going to be a process, but hey, it's possible. And I do think that that is, that is incredible and, 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 at the end of the day, you're making it happen. You're showing up. You're doing it. You know that is that is and enjoying cool, so. and enjoying the journey. I mean, uh, like it's been quite a party. Like and uh, and it's it's kind of nice to see. You know, kind of to know what's around the corner. I mean, like uh, you know, something, some great surprise, and that's that's exciting to know that it's it's only going to get better. And, you know, when it gets better, you get better. And, you know, you work with, you want to work with people who are, who are better than you because it makes you better. And so, you know, be a student, uh, have a good attitude, be easy, have a good sense of humor, and uh, just think about the good times. There you go. All right. I mean, I want to thank you for making this happen. I mean, thank you so much. And I also uh, want to thank those who uh, stayed the whole episode. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And most important, on the description below, you're going to find all of Tim's social media because we discover why he's super badass. Let's make him viral. Hashtag in Tim. And again, man, thank you so much for making this happen. Keep rocking thank out you. there. Thank Keep you. Keep doing what you friend. do. And I'll see you in the next one. See you soon.